I miss the fearlessness, vitality and bravery that wants to find me. My antique tiaras, velvet eccentric collars, ball gowns and red lipstick have now failed me and the exquisite fragility of the elaborate lie that links me to who I was via a catheter of artifice, nourishing me with dreams and diamonds, has evaporated. A myriad of majestic moments tug at my heart, and suddenly the carefully constructed mask of coping slips. My ability to suspend the truth fails me, and the awful reality of my brain tumour engulfs me in the pain and lonely darkness of terror. I miss me. I miss all I once was, and the endless possibility that stretched before me like a Persian rug. An unopened book, a full pot of ink. I miss that girl. I miss those endless Mayfair nights in Park Lane and Berkeley Square climbing the gates of Mount Street Gardens. I miss walking along the Mayfair rooftops into historic ball gowns, clinging to chimney pots, searching for clues to other people's pasts. Now I search the corridors of my memory for Tyne O'Connell, the me I was, undaunted, unbowed, brave as a poet, the girl who travelled the world alone, Paris to Dakar, blazing across the deserts, the polo fields and the croquet lawns of life, undaunted by minefields or borders, or giving birth without pain relief, in a Victorian bathtub without a doctor and only poetry to cling to. My life flashes across my synapses. The girl skipping through bluebell pathways, the mother kidnapped by curds, held hostage to a cause as old as history, ransomed for weapons, the years living in Egypt, sitting in those ancient coffee shops where my father once sipped tea on his missions as a secret agent for the British government. I see me holding the hand of a dying queen, passing the shemmy slipper to dukes and spies, the woman I was, undaunted, unbowed, shielded by the bravery of my Irish ancestors, who fled genocides, fought for liberty, heroines who died, defied conformity, misogyny, bigotry, boredom and borders, celebrated by children, betrayed by men, life is a ballroom, lit with chandeliers, fragrant with the ebullience of our dreams, dance cards on silken cords dangle around our wrists. We cope by trusting that misery and mortality, like the music on a gramophone, will always change. Life is change, all things pass, the terror of the machine gun smashed across my head by a man called Mustafa wearing a dead man's uniform who upon discovering I'm Irish blast the sky in a shower of celebratory bullets in honour of our revolutionary bond. Just another name etched on the dance card of life, the minefields I crossed, the rivers I travelled down in Africa and Asia, taking books to children, the palaces and ballrooms I have danced through, the hospital wards I have fled, and the Bedouin camps where I played poker amongst the ancient Egyptian ruins. Dynasties rise and fall and leave behind fragments of an empire and lapis lazuli beads. And I lay wretched in a hospital trolley, rattling down a corridor with a crooked wheel. Where is she, the girl who sat in hedgerows, hiding from the world, reciting Coleridge to her hen, the girl who once dived for pearls, now diving for my own soul, driven by inspiration, fuelled by my imagination, and armed with my inky quill. The music changes, and another Mayfair night begins, lying in a bed, attached to a drip of memories, nourished by the be beautiful lies I tell myself to get through another night of pain and the fear and loneliness, a tiara upon my head, a slash of red concealing my blue lips, praying I will wake up tomorrow, praying the music will change, trusting in the beautiful lie.